It is truly a stunning case of neglect. Children kept in a closet for at least a year. Now, one of them wants you to hear her story. The night piece, Jeremy Brilliant, with a young woman who's now unlocking the past to help protect others in the future. Something was wrong. I just knew something was wrong. Pictures of a little girl. This will never go away. This will never be right. Whose childhood was anything but normal. It was an emotion-filled investigation. Now a young woman, she's searching for the pieces that make up the timeline of her life, missing for so many years. I'm Dr. Hibbert. So nice it's to meet not you. nice to meet you, sweetheart. <laughs> From the doctor who treated her. Brandy, how are you, so kid? Nice to meet you. Oh, same here. Those are all mine. How are you? Look at you. To the detective who took on her case, Brandy Zachary is trying to connect the dots. I really just want to know, like, everything I possibly can, because I don't know really much about it. So, there was Brandy. Oh, wow. Pictures taken at Riley Hospital in 1995, after Brandy was taken out of her home. I can't believe that was me. I'm nothing. And you actually weighed what a four-and-a-half or five-month-old baby should have weighed when you were two-and-a-half. Wow. That's how skinny you were. Just 14 pounds at two years, seven months old. Once at Riley, she gained nearly two pounds in just nine days. In the thousands of cases of abuse and neglect Dr. Roberta Hibbert has handled, this remains one of the worst. This is a very, very serious form of maltreatment. She was very seriously malnourished um, and very seriously neglected. And when you saw her for the first time, what, what went through your mind? A devotion to see the case to the end and hold those responsible for what brought her to that station in life. Those responsible were Brandy's parents, William Zachary and Deanna Walden, high school sweethearts who lived in this home on North Street in Crawfordsville. Their normal way of babysitting was uh, putting Brandy in, a, in a, the closet. A filthy locked closet, along with an older brother, they were placed in portable cribs. The mattresses covered in garbage bags. At two and a half, Brandy couldn't walk or talk. She hadn't seen a doctor since she was six months old. And she'd been underfed for at least a year. Had you ever seen any case of abuse or neglect this bad? Not, not, no, no, quite simply no. And particularly with uh, uh, an easier fix, just feed the kid. Her parents worked opposing day and night shifts. While they slept, one during the day, the other at night, they put the children in the closet so they wouldn't run free. When I read their excuses, like, I, I laughed. I know that sounds strange, but I laughed because I was like, that is, those are the worst excuses I think I've ever heard. Now a 19-year-old college student, Brandy is discovering for the first time firsthand what happened. That really shocked me. Pouring over court documents uncovered by 13 investigates, we went along as Brandy visited her childhood home for the first time since her rescue and helped her find and meet those who made a difference. There were numerous people who helped Brandy get out of this house and get out of a horrific situation, but there was one person, one man in particular, who did something, who spoke up, and he may be the reason why she's here today. Hi. Hi, Brandy. My name is Dean. Dean Balaz was a friend and co-worker of Brandy's biological father. 13 investigates tracked him down after 17 years. It's been a long time. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Uh. Dean knew his friend had children but never saw them when he visited the house. Excuses were given that the kids were always sleeping. But after demanding to see them, eventually, Brandy was brought out. Skinny. Horribly skinny. So he called authorities to report the neglect. I don't think anybody, that if they knew, something like that could not do something. Brandy's biological father and mother were both convicted of felony neglect. He served two years in prison. She served one. Brandy hasn't had contact with him since she was a toddler. But even after it all, their daughter harbors no anger. God did this for a reason, and so now I'm here to try to share my story and help other children. That's, that's why he made sure that it happened to me. He knew I could live through it. Live and thrive. At more than a dozen foster homes, she celebrated Christmas and Easter. There were Halloween costumes, birthday parties, her first bicycle. She was adopted, gained a new last name, 
and positive attitude. After graduating high school with honors, she's now majoring in psychology, hoping to help children in need. I think there just needs to be more people out there like him that are willing to take that risk if they think something bad is going on. It means the world to me to meet you. Thanks a lot. Same here. So glad <laughs> to meet you. Brandy is not just achieving now, she is excelling. She'll finish an undergraduate degree in just two years, this while being legally blind, a lingering effect of the neglect she endured. She and her brother were adopted and grew up together. Reporting abuse can be done anonymously. If you have any hesitation about making that call, just think of Brandy. Jeremy Brilliant, Channel 13, Eyewitness News. Indeed, so good to know she's doing well today. If you suspect abuse or even neglect, we have several resources and phone numbers on our website. Just go to WTHR.com.